So you got Daisy Texture Baker, you got Daisy Texture Animator, one of the tools, but you want to know how to use uh, the Daisy Texture node to create your own textures that will output on these tools. So let's just say this is your object that you want to work with in Daisy. You want to click New Material on it. So there's a material on there now, but if you already have a material on here, you can just click on the cross and it will just remove any materials on there. So anyway, we'll click New Material. We're going to name this one Honey comb oh comb like you can leave it as honeycomb it won't work i believe at this moment in time in on the 3rd of the 10th 2023 that you need to have hyphen space day z and the capital z capital t for texture so it's that the material name needs to have daisy texture after the hyphen in um a capitalized d z and t so once you've done that We've got honeycomb daisy texture. You want to find your principled BSDF inside of this node group. If you don't see this, by the way, and you're thinking, how the hell do I get to that part? It's up here under the shading tab. So you might have something that looks like like this. So you need to go into the shading tab to see this stuff here. So let's get back to where it was. So we've got this principled BSDF. You want to click it so it's got the white outline and press a DEL key on your keyboard, the de delete key. So now it's just black. You drag. You go to your um, asset library up here. If you don't have this, you may have uh, something that looks like this, or you may have files up there. But if you move your mouse over to the very top left of this window, you see like a crosshair. You click on it, you hold the click, and you drag. Oh, ignore me, I just messed up there. Join areas again, sorry. So you click and drag to the right, so it splits it sideways like this. And then you have two of the same window on this top left one. You click on this um this icon in the top left. It, it could be different for each one. See, so this one's a ball. This one's like a, a painting. Whatever this icon is, you click on it and change it to Asset Browser. And then you can click up here. Well, you can actually. I'll, I'll do it for all default settings. So you click on this little arrow out here. And then you drop down and you look for the Daisy Texture node, which you would have installed with one of these tools. So we have this, the Daisy Texture node. You drag this into here, just as simple as that. And you hook up the BSDF output to the surface, like so. So now you have the like just a, a basic node that you can mess around with and do all fancy stuff thing to it. But we're going to use this as a PBR texture. So I downloaded some PBR textures earlier for the honeycomb. So we've got the color, we've got a height map, we've got the normal map, and we've got the roughness. So I'm going to drag each one of these pictures into the view into the end node part here, just so they're in there, and I can close this window down out of the way. So luckily on this one, they're all named. So we have the base color. I'm going to drag the color output of this. Actually, let me move these over here so you can see what I'm doing. So the color output of this one into the color of there, so as you can see, it's, it looks like it's on there now, and I'm going to click on this arrow here so I can shrink it down put it down here so it's nice and clean so I'm going to do the um, the height map so you drag the color of the height map put it into height map like so then you minimize then you line it up same for the normal color output into the normal minimize and put it up here so if this looks like this and it's actually no ignore me I'm just being stupid. There's that's the honeycomb texture anyway. So we've got the last one, which is the roughness. So color output to roughness, minimize it and tidy it up a little bit. All right, so so we've got the honeycomb texture, and you're thinking that's a, um, a little bit too big. I want to make it smaller. So you need node wrangler in, node wrangler enabled. So to do that, you go to edit preferences, add-ons, and search for node wrangler in here. So I just search for the word node, and it's node colon node wrangler it'll be off by default you just want to check mark it and then close preferences and you click on any one of these images and hold control hold shift and press t nope that was wrong control shift t what the hell is it control shift t <laughs> what the fuck is control t my apologies i'm so stupid so control and t and you'll get these windows here pop up so then you want to change this to the object like so, see what that looks like. No, that's completely wrong, so we don't want to do that. We'll go back to UV. 
<coughs> as you can see we've got a vector output going to the purple dot on these textures you want to link that purple output to all of these dots so they're all lined up and connected now so in this mapping you'll notice that there's three values for each so i'm going to um add a new node add search and type in the word value like so and i connect that well i'm going to put that to the scale like so now this scale controls the texture scale on the on the actual on the thing here like so and obviously the x and the y is a positioning so the y is the and if i hold shift you can see it a bit better so y is sideways and x is up and down but that's not always the case because if i look up here and do the same things see it it depends on your model so there's the x axis and the y axis the z axis I don't think that does anything, so I always leave it at zero. So that's how you can do your PBR textures. And if you're happy with that, you can now bake it out because the Daisy Texture node has the color, the normal, the SMDI, the ambient shadows, and the emissions. If you want to get really fancy on this one, say if you wanted to change the color of this, I'll just add this a little bit of an extra. So we've got the base color. You want to add a new node in here and call it the hue and saturation. So you add again, add, search, Type in the word hue, like so. So we put that there. Get the color output of the base color, put it into here, and the output of the hue and saturation into the input of the color here. And then you change it to hue, and it changes the um, changes the color of this. And if you want to animate this, you want to um, on this bottom bit here, just see where you got the up and down arrow cursor. You right click, and you do a horizontal split. You drag it up like so to roughly where I actually want the timeline to be. So I want it there. And then this window down here that pops up, click on this uh, icon here, change it to timeline like so. So now we have the daisy timeline. You want to right click on the, I'm going to set the hue to zero. And on frame one, I want to right click hue, insert keyframe. And then I'm going to go to frame 60, just for an example. and change the shift hue a little bit right click insert keyframe so now if I go through the timeline you can see it's animated so I could animate all the way up to 60 inside the daisy texture animator over here so frames I could type in 60 if that's where my last keyframe is that's the last animating animation I did and then you can bake out 60 frames yep be beware though when you bake out animations try to keep the frames kind of low because if you go like each frame is its own image basically so the more frames you have and the more versions of the image you have so if you're baking out the color the no hq the smdi and emissions that's four images per frame so say if you've got it as 10 frames you'll actually be baking out 40 images if you have all these selected so keep that in mind when you're baking long animations and if you need anything else any help for this um join the discord and open a ticket or just ask in the general chat. Everyone's in there to help and happy modding guys.